<laughs> Mow the lawn. Okay, mowing the lawn, you lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so, Momotion sponsored today's video and sent me their Momotion Luba 2. And I have to say, I am more excited about this than Sally was in When Harry Met Sally. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Stop that. Stop it. But just because it looks like a shrunken white Batmobile doesn't actually make it any good. So let's find out. I've been absolutely treading this because, well, it's British summertime and uh, who knows what the weather's gonna do. Today's forecast is bland. I think these are some sort of like telegraphing equipment to tell it where it lives. It's like a bumper, so it doesn't run over any animals. An aerial, I think that's an aerial. Uh, uh, no idea, I have no idea. That's a gigantic power supply. So very pleased, don't, oi, come back here. No, oh, don't do that. Son of a bitch. There are so many things, don't, oh, you bastard. That's another power supply extension reel, I think. Power supply extension. Replacement blades. Oh, look at that. <gasps> that is heavy and beautiful. Oh, I love it. Do not allow children, individuals with reduced physical, sensory, or mental capabilities. Oh. I, I got new glasses, by the way. I hate them. They look like one of the proclaimers' older, bolder brothers. Get up. Oh, look at that! Oh, they knew what they were doing here, didn't they? They have desperately appealed to my masculinity. I've got a security key now, which uh, goes in its, um, goes in its, uh... Oh, yeah! Goes in its butt. Disgusting! Unsubscribe! Yeah, you've got like, no idea what any of these bits are for, but uh, you do immediately, of course, go straight to the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. So I might just be a little bit proud of this, because I think I've found the only place in the garden where there is actually a flat surface. Because I've got to tell you, it's got his work cut out for it, it's on a right tilt. And I've managed to find a place where this will live. I don't think I'm going to get in trouble with the wife. Ooh, it's got a robot. I don't want to schedule, I don't think. What does a map do? I, I think I have to go follow this thing around. <gasps> what? No! Look at that! I'll start out by saying it doesn't actually have a grass collector. It just kind of spews the clippings onto the lawn. Don't, don't leave. All my friends on WhatsApp were like, Oh, it's no good then because it doesn't collect the grass. I won't buy one. This is because they're amateurs. Stupid friends. Lately, I've, uh, <clears throat> I've, uh, sort of had feelings for you. <laughs> Why is the audience laughing? I'll tell you what, it's actually funny. Why do girls wear makeup and perfume? Because they're ugly and they smell. <laughs> Grass clippings are actually really good for your lawn just not if they're above a certain length. After a certain length, they kind of block the sun from reaching the rest of the grass, and this is obviously bad for it, but with small enough clippings, it actually acts as a natural fertilizer. With regular enough mows, you can actually schedule this thing so that it will do different patterns on different days, so that each leaf is bent in a different direction to make sure the grass gets the most of the sun. And this is something that your lawn health will not get from a manual mow ever. Does that, does that convince you? Yes! Yes! All right, calm down. This thing is using something called RTK, which is basically satellite navigation to within a millimeter. Oh, it's following the edge. It's following the exact perimeter that I created. Just, I don't know why I thought it wouldn't, but <laughs> oh, please don't go over there. 
Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Everything you program in for your actual garden is millimetre perfect when it goes and does its roots. And whilst my lawn is fairly easy going, I've seen it on other reviews of earlier models mowing literal fields at practically vertical angles in torrential rain after happily crawling about in the mud like it's Shrek. And it's achieving all this thanks to its all-wheel drive system, low ground pressure, low centre of gravity, and adjustable suspension system. Battery-wise, I didn't even charge this thing as I got it out of the box, and it did my lawn one and a half times before it decided to go back to its station for a bit of a charge, and then, just like all good Robovacs do, it carried on where it left off until it was finished. It took about an hour, I think, for it to go from 12% to 70%. So pretty good. But these guys have gone really nuts with the detail. The mower has an algorithm to make sure that it doesn't repeatedly go over the same location as it returns to its dock, so it doesn't leave tire tracks permanently in your lawn, which is mental. You can vary cut speed and mowing overlap, as well as adjust the cutting height from 25 to 70 millimeters. It has adaptive suspension to allow it to pass over obstacles as high as 50 millimeters, and it has dual cutting blades with a total width of 400 millimeters. I think the thing that strikes me though is just how quiet this thing is. It's now 8.30 at night, and it is so quiet that it's just happily mowing away at night time. As we head back to its dock. You can actually schedule this mower to not run if it's raining, which is crazy. It uses a combination of sensors on its body and its link to actual weather reports through the app. And I chose this option. So the mower has never run since because I live in the UK where it permanently rains. Blah. Not even kidding. It's rained every day since I set this thing up. With that said, this robot is entirely waterproof at IPX6, and the scheduling can be set to run in the rain, it can be set to go and mow individual portions of your lawn at different cutting heights for each section, you can set the overlap amount, robot speed, obstacle detection mode, whether it does stripes or checkers, how many times it will cut around the perimeter, and even the cutting angle, and each of these things can be scheduled independently if you've sectioned your lawn up into individual zones. It, what? what? Yes! Yes! One of the things that sets this mower apart is that it doesn't require a perimeter wire. Traditionally, robo mowers would use a perimeter wire buried in the lawn to know when to stop mowing. This thing is using satellite technology to stick to its map, and you create the maps by guiding it around the perimeter like I'm doing in this footage. You can mount the satellite pole to the ground like I have, or for better coverage, you can mount it to the side of your house as long as it has a clear view of the sky. It also has binocular cameras and ultrasonic sensors to avoid obstacles and even gives you a choice of avoiding them entirely or passively aggressively nudging them like some kind of angry Karen. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like that. I want to talk to the manager. And just like a Robovac, you can set no-go zones by literally just tracing around the thing that you don't want to mow using the mower in the app. And now, as usual, it's time for the elephant. The elephant in the room. You'll still need to get your strimmer out. No, that's not a euphemism. Uh, obviously, this isn't a big deal. You would normally get your strimmer out to do the lawn edges anyway. And I must point out, I'm talking about, like, if it's gonna fall off an edge, like it would do in my garden. Oh god! Oh god! If your garden has a path, it will actually go right up to the path, and you can tell it to do this perimeter thing, like, three times. It has a proper algorithm for making sure it actually does the edges of your lawn, just because I have a thing that it might drop off. Secondly, when I parked this thing in its separately sold garage, I just boinged the camera housing off. Oh. I've approached Momotion about this, and I'll update the description to let you know what the situation with that is. I don't know if I've just got it adjusted wrong or what. I mean, I've kind of put it on the only way I can see how. They've really thought this thing through. It cuts out when you pick it up, it has guardrails to stop you from getting your fingers anywhere near the blades whilst it's running, and I'm not sure you could even get this thing to hurt you on purpose. 
I wrote a whole script for this end piece and I just think it's better to talk from the heart. This is actually a product I would 100% buy with my own money like right now if they hadn't have sent me one. And the reason for this is because I love mowing, like most people do, but you know what I love even more? Lying down in the sun while someone else mows for me? Blah! This is the most exciting product I've been sent in an absolute age, and mowing is a pain in the butt. If you really love your lawn, it can be very difficult to maintain it, and I have that problem. I don't always have time because this whole YouTube thing takes up an inordinate amount of time. I, don't, I think I just made up a word there. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I value my time, and I think this is a very worthy purchase. It is expensive, I'm not going to lie. There is a, a 1000 model, a 3000 model, and a 5000, I think? And basically, the only difference between the models is the square meterage. Uh, the 1000 square meter model is like £2,100. If you have the budget, I promise you, you will not regret buying this. This is a really valuable purchase. In the meantime, I want to thank these awesome people. They're my patrons from Patreon. Without them, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. Um, I'm thanking one every week, and this week is Alan Byrne. Alan has been my biggest contributor. He has been with me since like May 2021, and honestly, I can't thank him enough. If you want to be like Alan, you can come and do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, and my X's, and my threads, and my Instagrams, and my TikToks. Come and hang out there, and we can be best friends. See you next time. And even gives you a choice of either avoiding them entirely, or passive little pa oh, bollocks. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>